Hi, everyone. My name is Rhiannon McAhoneyek, and I'm a 24-year-old trans woman. I'm from Ontario, uh, Toronto, and I grew up and lived there until I was 10. And then I moved to Moncton, New Brunswick, uh, and lived there for eight years. And I've been in Halifax for seven years now. Uh, I'm a student here at Dow. I got a degree in psychology and gender studies from here. And now I'm in the last semester of my Bachelor of Social Work. I'm involved with many different groups on campus, like the LGBTQ Society and the Sexual and Gender Resource Center, and I work just downstairs at the info desk. I'm here to talk to you today about my gender journey. Over the past four or so years, I've identified as three different genders and used three different names and used three sets of pronouns. When I was about 16 or 17 or 18, depending on who you ask, I came out as a queer man. And for a long time, that identity felt right. I found a sense of community in the gay community and in gay people, and it just felt like a part of myself that, you know, was there all along, but I had finally come into and accepted. But over time, there was some messiness with that identity, and it didn't quite fit. You know, I started to realize that not every gay man wanted to be called girl or she, and then not every gay man wanted to do drag. And those who did often didn't do it because it just made them feel like themselves and pretty. And I started to do things like painting my toenails into cute watermelons and leopard prints. And for me, I considered that very masculine and manly. And don't get me wrong, for some people, painting their nails is manly. And I'm totally a proponent of gender being limitless. But for me, it wasn't. About three years ago, I started to think a lot more actively about my gender. I don't know about you, but I've spent hours and hours and days and weeks just thinking about who I am, how I fit into this world, and who I want to be. And through this time, I started to think, maybe I'm a gender. Maybe I don't have a gender. And then I thought about it a little more, and I realized, you know, I probably have a little bit too much gender than I know what to do with. <laughs> and I started identifying as non-binary. And that fit me for a long time, about two to three years. It gave me the comfort to walk down the street with a beard and a dress and be okay with being myself. I shortened my name and I used they, them pronouns, and it was really good for a long time. But then again, I found some messiness. You know, people perceived me still as my former self and just a gay male. And no matter what I did, I would still be trapped within that. So over the last year or so, I thought about it some more and spent some time with myself. And over the last two to six months, again, depending on who you ask, I started to live as a woman. Now, I could sit up here and tell you what it's like to transition in medical terms or what it's like to socially transition or change your gender marker or name on your IDs, but I won't do that. You know, all too often, trans people are expected to put our lives, our bodies, and ourselves on display for people to examine and for people to consume. A couple years ago, a great black trans woman, Laverne Cox, Sophia on Orange is the New Black, um, had an interview with Katie Couric. And within that, Katie Couric asked her about her body and surgeries that she's had. And Laverne graciously and amazingly responded, that's not your business. If you want to talk about it off camera, that's OK with me. But trans people are so much more than just public consumption. And I really believe that. And how this works, why trans people feel that they're expected to be this, is because of the transphobia and cissexism that exists within society. It's fixed notions of gender that tell us that our bodies aren't good enough, that we're not good enough we're not valued, and we're not desired. You know, transphobia and cissexism both work in terrible ways, often through something called dysphoria. Dysphoria is kind of like a messy concept, but it's when our internal feelings of ourselves don't match the perceptions of ourselves or our bodies or other people's perceptions of ourselves or our bodies in this way that makes us feel pain or grief or anger or sadness or shame or just discomfort with who we are and ourselves. You know, dysphoria can ruin your whole day. Sometimes I'll be having a great day, and I'll be at work, and I'll be having a great conversation with somebody on the phone, 
And somewhere in the conversation, they gender me. Thank you, sir. What's your name, man? And it just hits me. And it happens in my day-to-day -day life too with friends or with loved ones who slip up and use my old name or my old pronouns. And I just sit there and think to myself, is my makeup not good enough? Can they see my stubble? Is there ingrown hairs on my chest? What about my body? Let him know that I'm a trans woman. And dysphoria often goes along with this concept called passing. Passing is something that a lot of trans people feel that we need to blend in or look cisgender in order to be accepted in society. Cisgender being somebody who isn't trans in kind of a colonial view of gender. This recognizes that, you know, around the world there's many different cultures who don't abide by this two-gender system. Um, so that label wouldn't apply to everybody. But in a Western sense, um, that's what cisgender is. But passing binds trans people into having our bodies, our appearances, and ourselves rooted in cisgender ideals of beauty so that we can enter the world. And it works in terrible ways. Um, something I think about all the time for myself is makeup. You know, I love makeup. It can be a really great buffer for attracting less attention generally. Uh, it can make me feel pretty. I like to wear it to events uh, or going out or taking pictures. But I don't often wear makeup in my day-to-day -day life. In fact, it's something that I'm scared of doing because I'm scared of being held to this expectation from other people that I will need to keep wearing makeup for the rest of my life. It's something that women and trans women in particular feel all too often, and it sucks. And I just don't know if I'm ready to do that yet. But something I want to talk to you about today kind of reframes narratives of gender euphoria. I heard about this term a year or so ago. I don't remember where, although I wish I did. Um, but it's called gender euphoria. Now, with gender euphoria, it's not about focusing on what I don't like about my body, what makes me anxious, what makes me sad, or, you know, just what I'm not comfortable with. And instead, it's about celebrating my body for what it is. Our bodies are unique maps of ourselves. They're tactile and expansive, and they show memories of time past. It's really beautiful, actually. <laughs> And with gender euphoria, it allows me to reframe how I think of my own gender journey. You know, not everybody has access to things like what Caitlyn Jenner does and can one day enter the world with access to privacy and funds and surgeries and whatnot in order to become a different person. But what gender euphoria has taught me is that day by day, I slowly come into myself and I grow more but I have to be patient with myself. I only have this one body, and I need to treat it with the care and the respect that it deserves and needs to survive. And I hope that gender euphoria can also translate to other things and help you break down notions of what gender is or what gender can be. You know, men can wear makeup, women can have shaved heads and chest hair, and non-binary people can be masculine or feminine or androgynous or however they choose to present. Gender is truly limitless, and that's something that's so beautiful. As well as this, I want to have patience with you. Learning is a very long process, and unlearning is no different. We're taught our whole lives that gender is this great, big, rigid system, but it isn't. So I have a little bit of homework for you. Little things you can do in your everyday life to make trans people more comfortable and just to break down systems of gender. First one is, don't assume people's gender. This happens all too often, and it's something that's often subconscious. I know when I started presenting in more non-conforming ways, people gendered me more. And I think that people just get defensive of the unknown or just things around them and feel the need to force gender upon people. But the next time you're out in public and you see somebody and you think to yourself, I wonder what gender they are. Just go on with your life, because it really doesn't matter. <laughs> the second thing is pronouns. Ask people's pronouns and respect them. You know, a lot of people make these arguments that pronouns like they and them aren't grammatically correct or they don't make sense. But ultimately, what you're doing when you say that 
is that your laziness toward change is more important than making others around you feel comfortable and supported. Third thing is stop weirdly gendering stuff. Uh, all too often in society, we gender like things and objects into these like weird boxes like colors and makeup and clothing and babies and names and bodies and body parts and voices. Do you know how hard it is to actively try and change your voice? It's not fun. <laughs> and the last thing, a uh, little homework for you, is reach out to a trans person in your life. Call them or text them or talk to them and let them know how amazing they are. Let them know that they are the whole world because they are. And let them know that it's not in spite of themselves, but because of themselves. They are amazing, and you should let them know how loved and supported they are. And most importantly, if somebody in your life is going through some gender stuff, don't push them out of the closet, don't out them, sit there and support them, and let them be as authentic as they are comfortable being. I hope today I've expanded your gender horizon a little bit, and you can start to think in gender of gender in a more open and limitless way. The beauty and the possibilities of gender is something that inspires me constantly. Thank you for your time today, and thank you for listening.